linear equations. So in the last couple of videos, we've taken details about linear equations, and then we've used that to graph it. This time, we're going to take these graphs, or take these details about these graphs, and we're going to use it to come up with the equation. So again, last time, we took equations and information about it to come up with graphs, or things that we knew about our graphs. In this video, we're going to take details about the graph, and we're going to use it to come up with equations. So we're basically doing this full circle thing here. Okay? Almost always in math, if we work it one way, the next time we know, we're going to turn around and we're going to work it the other way. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay. So, this one, they've given us details about our line, and our job is to come up with the equation. As always, I start with a very easy example. This example gives us the perfect information. We want to come up with an equation that passes through the point of 0, negative 7, and has slope of negative 2. Now, if you're a visual person, maybe you want to graph this first. So remember, you graph it by plotting a point. In this example, we plot the y-intercept at negative 7. And then our slope has negative 2. So that means we would go down 2 units and right 1 unit. Or up 2 units and left 1 unit. So if your slope is ever a whole number, of course, you can divide it by 1 to figure out how your rise over run counts on your slope. So this is the graph of this linear equation. Not necessary, but if you're a visual person, it doesn't hurt anything. To come up with the equation, we're just going to start with our generic point slope equation, which is y equals mx plus b. If we knew the necessary information, meaning if we knew our slope and if we knew our y-intercept, then this equation would be very easy to figure out. And that's exactly the information that we know. They give us that our slope is negative 2, so that's what we substitute in for our m. And they give us our y-intercept, where the y-coordinate is negative 7. So that's what we're going to substitute in for our b value. So the answer to this problem is y equals negative 2x minus 7. And we have the equation that we are looking for. Note that we do not need to substitute anything in for x and y, because x and y represent every point or every ordered pair that is on that line. In part B, we want to do the same thing, but we want to use function notation, meaning we no longer want to use y, but we want to use f of x instead. So all we do is we take out the y that we found in the first equation, and we plug in f of x instead. So the answer to part B is f of x is equal to negative 2x minus 7. So we should know that y and f of an x are interchangeable, and so that's what we're doing in part b. So this one is a very easy one because they give us exactly the information that you need to know. So let's see another example where they're not so nice. In example 2, we want to come up with the equation that passes through the point of 2, negative 3, and has a slope of negative 4. Now let's go ahead and graph this for those of you that are visual learners. So I'm going to start with my point of 2, negative 3, which is this point here. Then I again count my slope. Now this is a whole number, so the slope that we're going to use to count is negative 4 over 1, which means I count down 4 units and right 1 unit. So that gives me those points there. Or, in the opposite direction, I would count up 4 units and left 1 unit. Which gives me these points 
here. And so our graph is the line that goes through all of those dots here. Now, this should definitely help us when we're trying to come up with the answer, with the equation to this line here. Remember, our generic equation, our point-slope equation, is y equals mx plus b. Well, we need to figure out what our m, or slope value, is and what our b, what our y-intercept value is. Now, they definitely give us slope, so we can substitute that in for m right away. What we cannot do, note that this point here is not our y-intercept. It was this point here. So we cannot use that to substitute in for b. That is one of the common errors that I see multiple students do. Okay? So if it is not a y-intercept, neither of those values are able to substitute in b. But if we're looking for a b value, that means we are looking for the y-intercept value. And even though they didn't give us that, we could have found that by looking at our graph. If we're looking for the point that intercepts our y-axis, we have that point right here. And that point is 5. So that gives us our y-intercept is 0, 5. And 5 is going to be the number that we are going to substitute in for b. Now, even though the graph helps us visually, and not only that, it did give us the answer in this problem, I encourage you not to use your graph as your main source of working your b value out. And the reason that I encourage you not to do that is because those points don't always line up exactly with your tick mark. Meaning, if they came to be a point in between. So let's just say we had our y-intercept of this value right here. We could try and guesstimate what that value was. So we could guess that it's 7.5 units, but that might not be exactly right. So we might guess 7 and a fourth or 7 and 3 fourths. But the problem is, is there's so many units between those whole tick marks that we could guess infinitely many guesses and still not get that right. Meaning, instead of 7.5 units, it could actually be negative 7.49 or negative 7.499 or negative 7.4999. So there's lots of approximations that fit in between our whole tick marks. So that is why I do not encourage you to use graphs as your full fledged showing your work. Because there's too many unknowns that can happen. So the way that we want to do this is we still want to substitute in our negative 4 value for our m. But to figure out what our b value is going to be. What we can do instead is we can substitute this ordered pair in for our x and y variable. So my 2 value I can substitute in for my x and my 3 value I can substitute in for my y. And that's going to give me what my b value is going to be. So I have negative 3 is equal to negative 4 times 2 and solving that equation will give me what my b value is. Now going by the graph I know that I should come up with 5. So simplifying this here, I get negative 3 is equal to negative 8 plus b. So to solve for b, I add 8 to both sides. And that does give me the correct answer of b is equal to 5. Now, do not stop here because that is not what this problem is asking for. It did not ask you what your b value was. It asked you for what your equation was. And that is this y equals mx plus b with your m and your b value substituted in. So we have y is equal to negative 4x plus 5. That is the answer to part A of this problem. Part B of this problem, same thing except for it doesn't want you to use y. It wants you to use the function notation f of x. So our answer is f of x 
is equal to negative 4x plus 5. So be careful. If the problem does not give you the point of a y-intercept, you do not plug in either one of those values for b right away. You're going to have to plug them in for your x and y, and then simplify that to figure out what your b value is. Mm -hmm.